apocalypse, Mr. Banner. Who are you? Your new lord and master. You may call me Dark Side. Welcome back, Bemmers. We're ditching the couch this time so we can get some thrills around King Arthur's round table. I'm Sir Mike. <laughs> this is James. I'm Shay. Lowly peasant go. James. There, that's right. It's I don't get a I don't get a designation. Bloody peasant as I smack you in the head with a yeah. with a, some kind of large croquet hammer while I'm on my horse. They love croquet over there. Yeah, they do. I know. You could have been Lady Shay, Shay. You could have called yourself Lady Shay. I could have, but so I So the didn't. only thing you could be is you could be a princess, a queen, or a lady. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You could be a bitch. As a woman. A wench. <laughs> they had wenches, yeah. Uh-huh. Serving wench. Serving wench Shay. Before some genius came up with the word bitch, they just had to call everybody wench. I'm sure they had. None. They had, they had bitch. <laughs> I don't see the Oh, thing. Sister Shay. Huh? Could be that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the those. holy, her holiest uh, designation. Wait, could you be a nun in, during the Dark Ages? I don't think so. Why couldn't you be? I think it was just like dudes. Oh, just based on gender. I was thinking like, yeah. could you practice your, your religious no, freedom? I, no, I, I don't think they had nuns in the Dark Ages. But then there's that theory that says the Dark Ages wasn't even real. That was back in those days where you could practice your religious freedoms. Am I right? James, can you Google when did nuns start? When yeah, did nuns like start? That. Mm -hmm. Start a nun. It's none your start, business. Start, start on them nuns. <laughs> yeah, what if we get back none of your business? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when... That's going to be my Close Google. Google. <laughs> my Earliest... Google's going to be real standoffish. When did nuns start? What a weird thing to say. Who was the first nun in history? 480 to 547 AD. The first nuns, St. Scholastica. Oh, I love their book fairs. Mm -hmm. uh, the patron Battle saint Star of nuns. Battlestar Scholas Scholastica. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> what a what a dumb way to start a show. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it was going on. Also, I heard they don't say the Dark Ages anymore because that suggests that everybody was just an idiot. Yep, um, which they so, were and still are. Yeah. Well, so what do we the, say? We say the Middle Ages. Yeah, or but they may not have happened. I was watching, or they may not have happened at all. I was watching uh, uh, the very funny Kunk on Earth on Netflix, and uh, she was pronouncing the Dark Ages as the uh, d the Dark Ages. The entire mm -hmm. time, I enjoyed it very much. I would have thrown a rock at my TV. Dark Ages. Well, it was a joke. It was. It was like a. It's kind of like a British version of the Daily Show kind of oh, attitude. Very I funny. Very Liberal funny. clap trap. Yeah, the the Dark Ages. Uh, hey, speaking of a uh, liberal claptrap, I'm going to bring this up. I, I read something in the news the other day, in the comic book news the other day, and I'm only bringing it up because we brought it up on the last couple episodes, and it's relevant again. Uh, famous boomer Mark Wade was throwing another tantrum again about Captain Marvel slash Shazam. Pretty sure we said, I'm pretty sure that he, he wasn't famous boomer. He was based boomer Mark Wade. I oh, sort yeah. of agreed with him. Did you read this article? I did not. <laughs> you don't know what I'm, so what, what are you, what are you basing this on? I think we, did we bring with? him up before about, uh, about complaining about the kids or taxes he, or something? He does complain a lot. He's he's a lefty boomer, but he definitely still does complain and throw tantrums, and he's known for just people finding him in his office yelling and screaming and throwing things. Uh, lefty boomers are Republicans. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. This was about Captain Marvel slash Shazam, because he's writing a new uh, Captain Marvel slash Shazam book coming in, like, I think, June. And... Uh, we were talking about this in the last two episodes because you guys had a big, big problem with the fact that he's not, not Captain Marvel anymore. Oh, I did. Yes, I think that's. I think that's weird. Shea poo pooed it as well. Mm -hmm. That that he can't say or that he can say Shazam, but he's also called Shazam. Mm -hmm. And you guys both had a big problem with that. Okay, I'll take your word for it. You're. <laughs> it came up two consecutive episodes. The last two episodes we did, it came up because Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel could be called Captain Marvel, but he couldn't be called Captain Marvel on the cover of his books because of the lawsuit with Marvel Comics, and so eventually everybody just gave up and called him Shazam. And then some people, aka you and Shay, had an issue with the fact that he could say his name, his superhero name, Shazam, and it is pretty it, okay. So it is it, it is strange that uh, a boy given the power of the gods all of a sudden gets a military rank. So actually, Mark Wade does kind of address that because in his new book, which is called Shazam, because they're still calling the books Shazam because they still can't call him Captain Marvel, uh, rather than go back to calling the character Captain Marvel or calling it Shazam, they're just going to call him the Captain. All right. Why not Billy? Yes. Well, because they give away his secret identity. Well, uh, uh, he turns into a different person. Lots of people are named Billy. Yeah, he could be a different Billy. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Just be, be another Billy. Nope. Just be nope. Billy. Nope. Because I mean, Mark... a, I mean, Black Adam gets to keep his name. He's still Adam. Yeah, that is true. Well, it's yeah. Teth Adam. Teth uh, Adam. Yeah, he gets to keep yeah. his name. Why doesn't Billy get to keep his? Uh, well, I would have gone with that over the captain. So now yeah. he's going to be Captain Billy, which is at uh, least... a name of uh, a brand would... of whiskey, probably. I would go on with ca- ooh Captain Will and Captain Willie, Captain Billy. That goes down nice and easy. Yeah. No, <laughs> I uh, because Mark Wade insists that things have to stay the same forever, or at least as close as possible. Uh, we can't evolve the thought, and so uh, he's just going to be the captain now, or at least for a little while. So like, um, I uh, on my flight home the other day, I watched the Elvis movie. Right? Yeah, and Elvis uh, mm-hmm. said his favorite superhero was Captain Marvel Jr. Absolutely. So who the fuck is that? Captain Marvel Jr. is uh, Freddie. So, did, yeah. bi- did Billy in his man form sire a child? No, no, no. It was it was his buddy. It was his uh, his adoptive uh, brother. So why doesn't he turn into a man? Oh, oh, why doesn't he turn into a man? Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't know, probably because he's just getting like a sliver of Captain Marvel's power. Why is he junior? Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of a that's diminutive, brother. wasn't it? Wasn't it? Well. But he also went from being uh, physically uh, handicapped to not. Yeah, you just got the upgrade from handicapped to normal uh, body. Whereas Billy, who was already of able-bodied stature, got upgraded to God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like they didn't think about this. <laughs> well, it was it was the forties. The forties. They were just coming up with a, a cheap Superman knockoff. Really. At I, the, at I would time. just I would just stay Captain Marvel Junior all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, be... I would now. Yeah. So, well, so, what if you're an old person and you get yeah. the powers of the Rock of Eternity? I like, think do you s- become a young person. I think you do because, as we saw in Kingdom Come by Mark Wade. Uh, Billy Batson grew up and eventually just looked like uh, Captain Marvel to the point where you couldn't tell which persona he was at the time. So I would assume that would continue, is that you would just you would just switch back. Just, I would just stay that way. He, I probably would too, yeah. Can he take his costume off? Well, maybe it's off? like Animorphs, where if he stays that way too long, then it, something bad happens. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, his costume gets stinky. All right, well, it's, I, yeah. a, it's like, can Captain Marvel in his Captain Marvel form wear different... He's like got to be able to. He has to be able Can to. Can he I've take off the it. costume? Now, if he takes off the costume, turns back into Billy, and then turns back into Captain Marvel, is it just a whole new costume, and now he has two costumes? Oh, that's a good-ass uh, question. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, the, that's basically Wade's entire first year. Arc then, the Captain. if he just keeps doing that, he can then sell the costumes on eBay. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's all sweaty and stinky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Ring yep. that out into some jars and just sell I the want, jars. I, I so want to see the Captain Marvel OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My point here is that... Uh, oh, there's a point. But, well, the point is that it's the worst of both worlds. We don't get Captain Marvel because okay. the, legally it's too much of a hassle. And we can't stick with Shazam because boomers like you and Shay and Mark Wade can't let ideas evolve. Well, hold on now, James. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, you're the one throwing <laughs> a little fair. fit here. Oh, yeah? Like, like, he could be Shazam. I don't care. That's the way they named him in the movie. Oh, yeah? If I'm the only one that cares, why has this been a stealth boom patrol? You just got boomed. Oh, God. I can go onto something called GIF, and I can send a picture with it. Thanks to millennials being able to pay for Apple Phone. And that's the way it was, and we liked it. Right. <laughs> you all got boomed. Ah, uh, stealth boomed. Boomer attitudes. We got it. You got us. Again, you're the one that's throwing a fit. <laughs> you guys were very upset about it in the last two episodes. Yeah, yeah but that was I, before. And Ma- okay, Mike was, Mike was a work, yep, and Shay has, Shay has goldfish memory and just decides it doesn't count against her. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of boomers, we're yeah, going, yeah, well, speaking of we're going, week, who dis? We're yeah. going back to the, the first boomers, people in the dark ages. Yeah, old the shit. The Black Knight. Speaking of old shit, I'm young and hip and not having a birthday soon, so I hate old shit. Oh, happy no, birthday, that's not true. That's happy Somebody's got a big birthday mm-hmm. coming if I, up. Hey, if I had a birthday coming up, why aren't we reading US 1 number 2? Oh, US two. 1 issue 2, like we All did right. last year. Yeah, that's right, because it was awesome. It was too it awesome, was... and it ruined our jokes. It was too good to be continued. That's right. Well, still. James is turning a, a, a big old insert number here with a zero. Yep. Happy 20. birthday, James. Yep. 20, 20 years 20 old. 20 big years. A yeah. whole, a whole fifth was, of a century. James was born in 2003. He doesn't even know who George Bush is. Wait, oh, you mean the, the most awesome president ever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which one? 
<laughs> Which you know, one? Who's your, I mean, who's he your was still Bush? president in 03. Was he? Yeah, he was, he was 2000, 2008. I thought it was Trump. He was president for decades. Yeah. He was. I know you're joking, but seriously, Donald Trump was the president for four years. Do you guys remember this? this he is will. Insane. He'll be the president again pretty soon. He, I don't see how he possibly could be. A couple. Well, I don't see ago, how. Joe, I don't see how Joe Biden's gonna. Because <laughs> Trump just has no popular. I don't. Yeah, it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a bad match no it's matter gonna what. Be, who's it gonna be? Like does, uh, the guy from Florida, Ron DeSantis versus uh, Kamala Harris? I don't want to vote for any of these. Yeah, people. all these are awful, awful options. Why didn't we just grade. get Bernie Sanders eight years ago? Yeah, he would have turned into a fascist too. He was already kind of leaning that way. Yeah, I guess. I guess like they all do. Like a little bit of fascism. Maybe it would be Buttigieg riding high off of the train derailments. <laughs> what a bunch of awesome. winners. What do you a bunch think of they, inter they interviewed him about that? He was just like, we need more black people on the railroad. It's like, bro, that doesn't answer any of the questions. Wow. What a good, uh, good like, shore up the hard left base by just throwing that out there. <laughs> it's like, I don't have any real solutions, but somebody's going to be happy if I say this. Yep. Yeah, like well, that's it. how Democrats get elected. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, speaking of regressive policies, the Black Knight, Medieval mm -hmm. Times. The Base Knight. I don't know why you pick this. I don't know why you put this on the wheel. Because, I don't either, uh, Mike. There was a, at, when, we, when James and I first started this program, mm -hmm. I picked a shit ton of books and mm -hmm. said, we'll eventually do these, and we finally got to this one. Yeah, I was hoping it was an adaptation of the Martin Lawrence movie, the Black Knight uh -huh. film. You guys remember that? Uh -huh, I, I saw that. I saw Black that. Knight? I was planning uh, uh, the 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 Twitch movies for when this comes out, and I saw that, and I was like, wow. "Damn, am I gonna play this fucking shit?" <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Well, it's probably great. Shay, was it great? What's your review on that? A plus. How, how many thumbs it. up? Do you like the Black Knight? Is it I, worth showing? Because I will. No, I saw it when I was like a kid. All right. Well, in honor of Shay, we're watching. Again, the I Black don't remember Knight. what I did last week. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's because you have a time. job that makes you go to the same place every day. Yeah, that stifles your creativity. When are you supposed to dance? I know. When are you supposed to dance? When's the schedule? Yeah, Where's the, the schedule thing? at? Yeah. Uh, the Black Knight from Atlas Comics, Marvel before it was called Marvel Comics, uh, created by Stan Lee and Joe Manili, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the Black Knight's still around. He's still around. I didn't realize he was in one of those damn Marvel movies. He was in yeah. the Eternals. Yeah, he was, sort of. Just, just went completely played by Kit Harrington, which I guess is supposed to be a big oh. deal, but it flew right under my radar because nobody played saw the, it. And he played basically the Black Knight in Game of Thrones. I was going to say, yeah, he was in yeah. Game of Thrones. That's what I hear. He played, he played that same character. He was is, he uh, all foppish, too? That guy is like four feet tall. Oh, Kit he's Harrington? A, he's, yeah, he's a fucking hobbit. Oh, short kid. A, a lot of actors are short, though. I know, right? It, yeah. it saves saves time on filming. Yeah, they and uh, they don't have to pan up and down so much. Saves money on wardrobe. Less material they got to yeah. yeah, unless they got to cover. You got to do it. Uh, so this character, uh, as I said, he was co-created by this guy Joe Manili, and I looked him up because I had never heard of this guy before. He's a Manili little fuck. Well, he was he was a good man. Uh, he's got but, kind of a he's actually got kind of a tragic story here. Uh, so I thought, oh. why have I never what have I never heard of this guy before? Because according to Stan Lee, this is a quote from Stan Lee, Joe Manili to me would have been the next Jack Kirby. He could also draw anything, make anything look exciting, and I actually think he was even faster than Jack. All right. So so what happened? Why why wasn't he around? Why why don't we hear about uh, Joe Manili? Well, his apparently, hands fell off. His hands fell right the fuck off. Actually, you're not that far off. When Manili was. <laughs> When Manili was 32 years old, Atlas fired everyone but Stan Lee. Yeah, and then, it was him secretly running the company all along. <laughs> and then Manili died in a commuter train accident because he wasn't wearing his glasses and stepped between trains. Oh, shit. Yeah, and shortly Stan, thereafter... Stan Lee killed him because he stole his glasses. He stole... He, just he stole the keys to his car. He saw somebody enjoying something, and he decided, not without me, you don't. <laughs> but Jack, Jack Kirby was too clever, though, and escaped his... His nefarious plot for a couple years, and then he went right back to Marvel mm -hmm. because nobody wants to pay anybody. Crawling back, uh, but shortly thereafter, Marvel started popping. In 2000, Lee said that Manili had Manili lived, he would have been another Jack Kirby. He would have been the best you could imagine. So I thought, well, was Manili really a Kirby level talent? How good was this guy? What other major characters did he create? Well, he created a child inventor called Ulysses Q. Wacky. All right, we're doing that. Put it on the wheel. He invent well, we can take a look right now because I got this pulled up. He oh, goddamn! You know me so well. He, he invented things like automatic spanking machines.
Queens. Sweet. I want that <laughs> for my Duke. <laughs> yes. In fact, most of Wacky's adventures did seem to involve spankings. There's a lot of bras that are going to like stick their legs up and they smack in that clip. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, Ulysses Q. Wacky was one of his other inventions, and he's a little guy who goes around inventing things, mostly inventing ways that his father can beat him more easily. I've noticed that he created the machine to spank himself. <laughs> yes, he did. He created it. A, a, he wanted his father to have an easier time committing physical abuse to him. I like that uh, his, it, it's also forcing his dad to lose weight by riding the bike that powers it. A lot of cardio. Yeah, it's a, it's a bike with a giant, like, uh, uh, like, a, like a boat propeller in the back. That just mm -hmm. spanks them at a speed that would probably murder his son. Right. And his he, ass would, jazz cheeks would fall off. He's in a horrible, horrible agony. Well, back so, then you beat your kids. Yeah, yeah. Joe Manili really had his finger on the pulse there when he created Ulysses Q. Wacky. I guess you still beat your kids. You just don't talk about it. Yeah, you just keep it, keep it between yourselves. You beat them down by not respecting their pronouns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the same no, thing. They it's the do. exact same thing. They your parents, do. Parent, your parents, parents respect do. pronouns now? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they got to. They got to be good parents. Yeah, you got to All be. the parents are like Gen Z's now. Uh, I don't think that's true. Yeah, Gen, Gen Z's are having kids, dog. That's how old you are. You're Let's 40. See. No, 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 no. I'm 20. Uh, Gen Z's, what, what is, what, 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 how old are they now? Aren't they like 12 years old? No. They're in their 20s now, bro. Oh, because we kind of skipped the Gen Y. We just kind of went from X, and then we said Millennials. Yeah. And then we went straight to Z. So I guess Millennials are Gen Y. You and I are nothing. We're elder Millennials. Oh, not really. We're like in between. No, we're not. We're born after 1980. Well, it's, uh, I've heard, I've seen so many. You're, uh, you're on the cusp between Millennial and Gen X. Yeah, I, I heard we were, we, I got, we, were the, we were the lost generation. Or no, one cared, no one cared about us, and it was we obvious. Because we really liked that show Lost. Yeah, because we were so based. Yeah. Based was, lot, uh, lost nope. viewers. Show was stupid. Dumb yeah. show. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> All so, the shows back then were terrible. Every show was dumb except for Seinfeld and oh, Golden Age yeah. Simpsons. All right. All right. Everything else was stupid and maybe a few episodes of that Kevin Sorbo Hercules show. Oh, that show was great. All the <laughs> Sam Raimi stuff. Sam, anything Sam Raimi did, I'm all about. You know what? I guess the 90s was the best time for television. 90s was the best. Everything uh, was great. Come on now. They didn't take it so goddamn seriously. Yeah. Just have a good time. I they watch us with that. That was their mantra. Don't think about it. Just have a good time. That was on TV. Get like, so easily. I was like at my parents' house, and all there is to do is watch like antenna TV there. And Baywatch was on at like one in the morning, and that show was for fucking morons, like the dumbest yeah. people alive. Those, yeah. like the women back then, weren't even attractive. Uh, on the show, yeah, they just look. They didn't look like people. Oh, you're talking about like you had Pamela Anderson. Didn't you have Yasmin Bleeth on there? Am I wrong I about that? Know. I don't find either of them attractive. Um, 90s they attractive. Even, they, they don't even read comic books. Kind of skanky. Well, uh, Pam Anderson was in a comic book movie. She was in Barbed Wire. She's yeah, a pioneer. Written, written by Stan Lee. <laughs> uh, well, then of, she had that cartoon. Pretty, uh, also written by Stan Lee. Yeah. Oh, Stripperella? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, that was one of the uh, the sole things that Stan Lee got sole credit for because nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. I bet it was awesome. It was probably great. Uh, speaking of Stan Lee, I, I, I'm not sure my assumption was that he is the credited writer, or there's no credited writer really, but he is the uh, documented writer for this book. But according to comics.org, uh, they removed his credit and they just left it unlisted. So we don't know who wrote any of this shit. Oh, um, and most of, it, uh, most of it was illustrated by a guy named Fred Kidda. Uh, and Joe he's Manili, kid a, he so is kid, a, kid well, around. He was an Asian man, so that that made sense. Uh, and uh, what? that's that's a la that's an Asian last name, is it? Kidda, yeah. Kidda, yeah. Huh. But he, but he, but he was kidding around a lot. Yeah, so it worked, it worked really well. Uh, the only thing in here from Mr. Joe Manili, as far as I know, is the cover. Mm -hmm. the cover's really good. Huh. Cover's all right. Yeah, cover's dynamic. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, we got the black knight running into this castle and he looks, as I mentioned last time, like he's wearing a fedora on top of his skull mask there. I'd be pretty scared if he kicked open the doors and that dude's running yeah, sure. with his sword up. Well, he's, people did back then. Yeah. You just came and he just raised things. You just took what you want. Mm -hmm. Now only that the Chicago PD can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, they do. Uh, and they do. They absolutely do. Uh, so yeah, he's uh, running in to, uh, who, who is this? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I barely read this comic. This is uh, hard. He's running into uh, what well, they call him Modrid, which is Modred. one of the was the different pronunciations of Mordred, and uh, who is the the main bad guy in the Arthur story. 
isn't it Mordred in the rest of the book? Or am I wrong? Because I've been calling him Mordred in my head this whole time. I mean, no, he's Modred, which is Modred. the... Uh, okay. There's a lot of different pronunciations from all the characters' names, obviously, for how old the story is. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the different countries the stories were were told. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the basic idea here is that he's a, uh, he's a knight and he defends uh, King Arthur's kingdom, uh, but nobody knows who he is. Yeah, he's just a classic superhero, but in the Dark Ages. Yeah, yeah. And this is not the same version of him that we see in the Marvel movies and stuff nowadays, but it's the same lineage. And now he's got a biker jacket and rides a flying horse with bat wings. God, that might be real. Is that real? Yep. And he's got, his weapon is a uh, black blade called the Ebony Blade, which is ridiculous because we all know that the, the only true Ebony Blade is Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. only real one. Yeah, those movies did not age. <laughs> did not age well. Except for Blade 2. Blade 2 is still really good. I mean, they're still probably better than some of the stuff they're cricking out. Blade 1 is unwatchable. <laughs> is it uh, Blade Trinity where they had to CGI his eyes opening because he refused to open his eyes? I guess. Do you know what it's I'm talking about? It's got Ryan Reynolds. Do you, do you know? I'm guessing, Shay, you don't know what I'm talking about either, right? Triple H is in it too. Uh, CGI's, yeah. I can't remember the reason why, but for some reason he Oh, yeah, he wouldn't to, open them. He refused to open his eyes in Blade Trinity, so they're like, well, I guess we'll just CG his eyes open. Maybe he was just really, really sleepy. I mean, that was the heyday of Wesley Snipes. He was probably out partying every night. I think at this point he was in that weird e Egyptian cult, and he thought he didn't have to pay taxes. <laughs> Oh yeah, he had huge tax problems. Man, you're right. Everything he went to I, jail. You're right. Everything I say sounds made up. Well, you're attracted to the bull, the the most bullshitty bullshit things. Yeah, but that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, it did. But you're you're like you're not also talking about you know tort reform and all the the really boring things. You're just attracted to the insane things that happen. So when you reiterate the things you know, it, they're inherently they sound fake. Yeah, but no, I'm Those usually are the things you telling banked. the truth. <laughs> usually. <Yeah. laughs> telling some version of the truth, telling your truth. Um, so, all right, yeah, I guess let's see what's going on. we got a handful of books. Uh, they're all they're all terrible. Oh, no, go back up. Okay. All right, so, like, it's a weird ad. It's like a weird pyramid scheme where this company will, like, send you items for you to sell, and it says, yeah. send us no money, we, we trust, trust you. you. That, yep, what finally. the fuck? Yeah, I don't understand how that would work. They had to have some sort of provision. There's no way they're sending all this crap, and you can just go around selling radios and guitars. I would just pick out the one thing that I want, and then have them send it to me, and then just keep it. Yeah, who cares? Like, you shouldn't have trusted me, that's yeah. for sure. I'm a child. Man, look, like, that child could just get a free bike. Yeah, seriously, what do you expect? A fucking eight-year-old boy to have a moral compass? Yeah, well, back then, they had Jesus and prayer in the school. Yeah, they yeah, were that all made punished. everything better. It did. It really, raised, really raised did. A fantastic generation. The greatest generation. The greatest. Boy, those, uh, those, that whole family up there is really, really happy to work for nothing. Yeah. Oh, actually, we'll see. You know, speaking of the ads, there's a far more ridiculous ad coming up. Speaking right. of working for nothing. So I, I'll, I'll focus on that one. This one is just your generic, like, sell some goofy bullshit to your neighbors. Yeah. Ruin yeah. your relationship with your neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Make sure they always close their blinds when they see you. Oh, hey, look, it's uh, North Broadway, Chicago. Mm. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that was a, probably a good place to hide your money, run your pyramid scheme. It still is. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's, I mean, really I'm in Chicago, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> we've, we've really cleaned it up over here. Running squeaky clean. We did not. Uh, this story, and the stories don't even have names, all right? Nope. So that's another thing. Uh, this first Black Knight adventure, uh, we have the nice, the, the typical like splash page that gives us an exciting overview of what we're in for before we actually get into the story. The first thing you see is the Black Knight chopping the head off a horse. Is that a? Oh yeah, he did. He did okay, that, that horse, didn't he? he? Fucks that horse up. Wow, that horse didn't have any say in any of this. It was on the wrong side. Yeah, yeah. Can I? Gonna... I'm sorry. I gotta. So after Mike pointed out the address, I googled it to see uh -huh. what's there now. Uh huh. Um, it looks like a carpet store, but then across the street is a Planned Parenthood and a Dollar General. Sweet. Nice. All right. Look how well we've we've come up in the world. Great things for the community. What neighborhood is that in? Edgewater. Mm, oh, Edgewater. that's yeah, actually yeah. pretty close. Not to spill too much tea, but that's actually pretty close to where Shane are right now. And I used to hook up with girls there. Yeah, it's a it's a good not place. with not with James and I. Mike did not hook up. With no, James no, 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 no. Neither no, of no. you are good enough for me. There's a nope. there's a distinct fire line there. 
Because I used to, I, I picked Edgewater specifically because I didn't know anyone who lived in that neighborhood and it was super far away from where I lived. Yeah, you know, that would be a good, you always have a good excuse to not meet up with that person. Yep, yep. That way they just Uber to my house and we just yeah hook up and I wow never have to date. i mean in theory that could backfire on you because you know you'd be as expected to uber to them I had a car. okay all right, all right. I could just drive there and then be like, I'm really tired from that drive and then leave after and work out all the angles I did my dirtiness. yeah after you desecrated some poor woman's studio apartment Yep, yep. go in there and flirt with her roommate because I'm a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> running your own little dentist system the mic system Bro, I used to be scandalous. There was no stopping me. I don't know. I'm thinking about getting back into my really poor behavior. Yeah? Because, uh, like, I'm super shredded right now. So I'm like, I should really utilize all this. Well, there's a lot of good scams now. You can have uh, you can have AI write your texts for you and everything. You don't really have to do much of anything. No, you just go. No, that's a terrible idea. Like, meeting women on the Internet is terrible. You just got to go out and talk to people. Uh, yeah, that's not a thing that human beings can do. That's, that's not... what I do. That's what I used to do. No, And that's what I'm going to no. go back to doing. Listen, maybe for you elder millennials, but for us hip young 20 somethings. <laughs> hey, too scared no. to talk to girls. Thanks. I get, it riles my anxiety. Uh -huh. I got good at talking to girls. My dad once said to me, What's the matter? You scared to talk to girls? And I'm like, Well, fuck you, dad. And I got yeah. really good at it. I do. I have done a lot of things in my life just to spite family. Yeah. That has been a powerful motivator in my life. My dad shamed me yeah. for being Maybe. a pussy, and he was right. You're going to find his journal one day and realize that he did that all on purpose. Yeah, I, you know, I'm glad he did. All the, the Everything I thought like growing up, I thought that my, what my dad was doing to me was terrible. All it's done is benefit me. It's made me a stronger person. Like it's just helped me in every way. You know, they say when you get older, you realize, you know, all, all your parents, all the things you didn't like about your parents, oh, they were right all along or they were trying their best. I don't think that's uh, proved to be the case for me, so, which either means I was right all along and they weren't very good at their job or uh, I'm still a child and I haven't grown up enough to respect that. I used to hate mean old dad. Now I love base dad. <laughs> well, he can't punish you anymore. That was super base, turns out. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, all right, all right, all right. The Black Knight here, he's with King Arthur, and they're attacking uh, Sir Guy's army because Sir Guy and his people want to take over Pendragon, I guess. Yep, he's just some guy. He's just a dude. We should he's change him to, instead of Sir Guy to some, some guy. guy. I mean, it's odd that that was a name. Yeah, Guy. Guy's guy. still a name. Guy sounds like, it's one of those names where you just didn't care enough about your kid to give him a real yeah. name. Yeah, what's up, guy? Call guy. I don't care. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe that's that's probably where the word guy came from. It was just lazy parents? Yeah, just there were a lot of guys out there, so you just use it as a general term for dudes. Hey, guy. Hey, Betty. Yeah. yeah, what if guy was the most popular name? I mean, by definition, it probably should be. Yeah, guy. Like, everybody's kind of guy. Everybody's at least 30% guy. I mean, I call everybody guy and dude yeah. and bro. Yeah, because they don't want to remember all their names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at I this sure guy. don't. I <laughs> look at sure this. don't. <laughs> look at look at old bro over here. <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> That's me every time up? I see someone who knows me. Oh my guy. Yeah, uh, this dude, I'm always super happy to see him and then I hope <laughs> to God someone says their name at some point. <laughs> yes, I do that so much. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> especially it's especially bad when they clearly remember me and they remember oh, our yeah. interactions and they have like very specific fond memories with me. Yep. I, say That's, I definitely have that problem because I'm always trying to cause a huge scene and get and get over. So they sure as shit are going to remember who I am. They're I just in the, they're in the background of my antics. I drove up to Milwaukee for a job, and the dude there uh, apparently knew me very well and immediately launched into like a friendly conversation about our shared background and shared experiences. I had no idea who this guy was. And you said, dude, the fuck are you? And you jammed yep. your thumb in his eye. And then I ran off. And then you stole his wallet. Yep. All right. Uh, Shay, do women remember each other's names? You got a better memory for that kind of thing? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a no. no that's I think that's no. a person by person and not a not a gendered thing. Well, it just seems like something that women would be more sensitive to. When I put down people's names in my phone, I put down their first name and how I know them. Yeah, how you got to put them. in a... Like put the company trait. I worked them with or what their job is or like if they have a talent that impressed me. What's my note? You're just Shay, because I've been doing this show with you for years. 
This show's been going on for 18 years. <laughs> yeah, I could just since would. I was two years <laughs> old. <laughs> I was two. about to say since you were two. Yep, and Shay's been robbing the cradle. Yep. Well, you know, you pedophile Shay. It's yeah, okay, it's okay when it's we the got, woman. It's it okay sure when is. the woman is older. It is okay. <laughs> totally fine. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be heroic and say the truth. <laughs> okay. Real. Just call me Mary Shay Lacorno. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> Guys want to fuck. Uh. You can't take advantage of a, of a guy and when you're an older woman. Wow. I All don't right. agree with that, but I, so that was a good joke, and you guys didn't react, so fuck y'all. Oh, I, 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 re I reacted. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you, you. Celebrate me. Fuck your birthday. Oh. I just you can't uh, celebrate pedophiles. I listen to whoever's the loudest, and at that me. moment, it was Mike. Yep. It's always me. That's All how right. I've gotten where I am in life. Panel two. So, yeah, uh, seriously. Yeah, this this fight rages on and uh they knock out this dude Sir Guy Wanderall and they say, "Hey, what have you been doing? You've been you've been uh, uh raiding and pillaging over in Pendragon. We can't have this going on. What's going on? We'll plead your case before King Arthur here." Mm -hmm. Sir Guy says, "Well, I did do all those terrible things, but I had good intentions. I'm a simp." Yeah, he's been simping for yep. uh, the girl he adopted. Yes, so he says he basically, you know, bought a woman. No, actually, he says that the woman is, uh, she it's his, has... It's his ward, which makes it like a kind of his kid. It is kind of odd. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the relationship is, because he says the Lady Rosamund, yeah. who, as we'll find out, is actually, uh, the Black Knight is actually secretly in love with her as well. Yeah, also but a simp. I guess Sir Guy... Uh, was doing all this raiding and pillaging and whatnot because Lady Rosamund had a lot of large holdings and he really wanted to get his hands on them. Mm -hmm. I feel you, brother. Yeah, I was as it, soon right? as I saw that, I immediately went, "Well, James is going to point this out." Yeah, <laughs> he wanted James, to be a. James, would you date for money? God, would I? Do no, that? He, no, the holdings are boobs. Yeah, oh, I see. He does specifically mention he wants to get his hands on those large holdings. For she has ah, large holdings. Ah, I wonder if they wrote that in on purpose, like a yeah. little joke. Maybe, maybe. A little, um, little, little holy Because again, I definitely saw that and went, well, that's getting mentioned. She's got large uh, tracts now, of land. <laughs> yeah. So that does bring an interesting question up, though. Would any of us... Now, in this scenario of dating for money, is the person far wealthier than you or just they're, you know, at, at a comparable level? I dated the daughter of a billionaire for three years. Right, and she was a terrible human being, and you hated no, her. No, she was great. I don't know. So I guess well, that's the answer for Mike. I, I guess if she was a, I, but well, but that's not why money. I dated her though. She hid her money from me for a super long time because I would just go on long communist rants. Well, that's what you got to do. And well, then I found out, but by then it was too late. But would you do it just for money? No, I don't give a shit about money. Shay, well, that's. That's a that's a great act to put on for the podcast, but it's not true. Shay, <laughs> would you date someone just for the money? That's Do not they fair know to, I'm dating that, them just for the money? That's not a fair question to ask a woman. Ah! <laughs> the MRA version of Mike coming on here. Like, would I be a sugar baby? Eh. Uh, yeah. Would I, I would, would I date someone without them knowing that I'm only with them for the money? That's is, underhanded and gross. <laughs> So you wouldn't, you'd have to delude yourself into believing that you love them. Yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm with Shay. Like I'd have to do some self delusion to get to there, but it would be nice to be taken care of. Uh, I, I don't want to be taken care of. Oh, I definitely want to be taken care of. I got everything I, I need. I'm good. Uh, I want to be swaddled. No. Uh, all right. So we learned a lot about ourselves there. So, uh, you wonder why I wouldn't want to date a rich woman is because then she's going to want me to do rich people shit. And I fucking hate that stuff. Oh, the best shit? We're in a cummerbund? Yeah. I don't want to go to fancy restaurants. I don't oh, want to go. Love a good, I love a good fancy restaurant. You I was do? just at a fancy restaurant for well, work for like a rap party and I got bored and caused a huge scene just for, just for fun. And what's that scene? I, I started like pounding on the table and demanding my food. I opened More up a mead. Can of, I opened up a can of spam. Or grog. I, I talked a bunch of shit. Yeah. And then I and then when and then then like when the ten minutes before my food arrived, I ditched and didn't even eat it. No, Shay, I like a good restaurant. I don't go out very often, but if I do, I, I enjoy myself. Yeah, fuck restaurants. They're disgusting. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh so anyway, King Arthur uh listens to this guy's plea and he says, Oh, I get you, bro. I've been there. All right, here's the thing. I'm not gonna kill you, but you have to stay in your region, uh, and I never want to see you in Pendragon again. Cool. Yeah. He's like, I understand. I simp for ladies, too. Yeah. He's like a cuck, though, because Lancelot's fucking his wife. Well, 
Is that is that the canon here? Yes. All right. I didn't Have you know, guys never read that no. book? What the hell? Why would I read this? Don't I don't they, care about old shit. They may be reading it in school. Yeah. No, I, I honestly, I didn't get assigned books at all in school. It was ridiculous. I had to oh, read yeah. on my own. I took a class called British Lit, so I know all the Shakespeare stuff. I know all mm -hmm. about King Arthur. I know all about mm -hmm. Beowulf and all that stuff. Yep, and it's all it's all becoming valuable right now. Yep, this is the, the only time. It, 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 thank God for that class. <laughs> so... Some guy decides, all right, well, I've been uh, exiled to, to my own region here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a suit of armor just like the Black Knights fashioned, and I'm going to smear the Black Knight's name throughout all of Pendragon. Mm -hmm. All right? So we, Camelot. He, oh, yeah, okay. Well, it's, it's Pendragon. Pendragon. Arthur Pendragon is his name. Oh, I thought, but doesn't it mention Pendragon as a as a geographic location? It's like the house Camelot? of. It's like the house of Pendragon. Oh, I thought that was like his county within Camelot. No, no. Pendragon is his name. Yeah. Okay. Well, I knew it was his name, but I thought he had basically named the area. What after you just himself. did is like calling the the Odysseus from the Odyssey Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand the concept. I'm just saying it's never really made clear to me. Within the context of this book, if Pendragon is is if he's named the area based on himself or not, apparently nope. he has not. All right, that's nope. fine. He lives so in Camelot. Camelot. All right, that's fine. And I ain't gonna Camelot, go back and amend it. Camelot is in England, and England is in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so he decides he's gonna head out and he's gonna start smearing the Black Knight's name. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we check in with Lady Rosamond, mm -hmm. right? who's a total bitch. And oh, yeah, she is bitchy. Yeah, she's, she's not cool a, at all. Is bitch, and as we'll see at the end of the book, a little bit of a homophobe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, <laughs> the very yeah. last panel of this book is a kind of a crazy left turn, but we'll get to that. Yeah, right. uh, she does not even look nice once in this no, book. No, at all. She looks so, like the evil queen <laughs> from Sleeping Beauty. Yes. Snow White. Snow White. How dare you? So... The Black Knight returns back to the castle, and he sneaks in through a secret passageway and changes identities. Now, it turns out that nobody, nobody knows who the Black Knight is. It turns out that he's actually, uh, what is his name? What is his real name? Sir Percy? Yes, I think uh, Sir Percy. Name, he's not a sir. He's not a knight. He's just yeah, Percy. Yeah, he's nothing. He's just Percy. He's, he seems to be the court bard. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's got a very, very good loot experience. I got mm -hmm. strong Scarlet Pimpernel vibes from him. Yep. Oh, yeah? Hey, we didn't read the first three issues, so we don't know how he got so good at fighting. Yeah, we don't know his backstory at all, but he's no, very I... good at playing a fop. Well, maybe he's like um, Hugh Jackman. Oh, like he's tough, but really he's a dancer? Yeah. Oh, oh that's the best of both worlds. And so here he's like the, the Black Knight, right? And he sneaks up into his house, and he comes downstairs, and he's like, hey, how's it going? She's like, don't talk to me, queer! <laughs> it's... It's pretty true. Now, it's worth noting, Sir Percy's in love with Lady Rosamond. Lady Rosamond is in love with the Black Knight, despite the fact she's never seen him. Right. That's a uh, trope that's been in comics for a while. It yeah, is. It has. And uh, so, uh, in theory, Lady Rosamond would be in love with Sir Percy, but all she sees is some loser. Yeah, because yeah. he is. Because he is. So he comes in, and he's uh, everybody is celebrating the Black Knight's victory, and Sir Percy has to throw people off the scent that he's actually the Black Knight. So he for just says, uh, for some weird reason. So he just kind of comes in and says, why don't people care more about odes? You know, yeah. why doesn't he, he just take off his helmet and be like, hey, guys, it's me. I've been doing this all along. And they're like, wow, we don't hate you anymore. There's no reason for you to hide your identity. You'd think he could at least tell the king. Why can't he just be the Black Knight and the guy who's really kick-ass on the loot? I don't know. I don't know. That would be a more interesting character. Very dynamic. Maybe Kinda he's like, just afraid that if, if that was the same guy, everyone would resent him for being too awesome. Yeah, he'd be too good at too many things. All right. When's he practicing the loot? Wouldn't his, how does his fingers have so much dexterity? Yeah. I, I, What's he going to do if he gets stabbed? Uh, so Sir Percy uh, shows up and he's kind of throwing uh, Lady Rosamond off the scent while he's uh, secretly pining for her. Mm -hmm. For some reason... And, yeah, he uh, he likes he's got a fetish of some kind because he like likes bitch, being treated like shit. He just yeah. likes bitchy ladies. She negs him pretty hard. Yeah, right. Say so, mm -hmm. it's the reverse of what we've been doing with all them Superman comics. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the reverse reverse of what we saw with Lois Lane for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea here is some other things happen. Listen, you know, been, I, you know, hold, hold on before we get into that. I you know I've been thinking about that. It's like Superman was punishing her for how she treated Clark Kent. 
Oh, yeah. You think that might be it? Yeah. Wow, what a, what a petty guy. Like, fuck it. Well, hold on now. <laughs> like, she got what she deserved. Well, it's, this, it's clearly the same guy. They look exactly the same. She loves Superman, treats Clark Kent like shit. But Clark Kent doesn't carry himself with confidence, and that does count for a lot. I, I don't know. We read four of those books, and not once right. did he not carry himself with confidence. Except Clark for the, Kent? Except, except for he didn't get that raise. <laughs> well, I mean, there you go. That's reason enough right there. Hmm. Oh, yeah, right, because women only want guys with money, yep. which we and just now, talked about. And now Lois Lane is making even more than Clark. Yep. That's fair. Oh, just, yeah, keep, women hate that. Keep society <laughs> chugging along. Hypergamy, bro. You got to do it. These are I'm just the sure, rules. I'm not sure which side of this you're on anymore. I don't know. There are no sides, James. It's just the human condition. E- everything Shit's is just sides. just the way it is. Everything is sides. It's just words coming out of my face. So, uh, so yeah, the, the imitation Black Knight, Sir Guy, he starts causing a ruckus. First thing, but the narrator makes sure to tell us that his sword swings are not as good. Of course, how could they possibly be? They call it a half-hearted pussy swings. So this results in the king banning the Black Knight. They didn't even check the DNA evidence. Yeah, they just the outlawed king. him. Mm-hmm. And, and he's just trying to drown out the sounds of Lancelot plowing his wife. <laughs> I wish I knew more of this lore. I didn't realize that was what was going on. Yeah, so Lancelot is plowing uh, Guinevere, right. the queen... Right. And the King of England, the, the King Arthur, is fucking his half sister. How does Lady Rosamond, what's her job in all of this? Uh, to be mean to yeah. the court bard. Because she's not the queen. No. She's not fighting. She doesn't seem to be no. serving any purpose. I guess she's a ward. What, what does a ward do? Nothing. Well, she's probably just like, she well, inherit, she's, she's, she's an uh, inheritor of land, and she mm. was unmarried or too young. Oh. So she's on. She's sitting as a like a kind of a lady lord in court until she marries. Okay, All right, that's fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so anyway, the Black Knight is banned in Camelot. Mm-hmm. Does King Arthur rule over all of Camelot? There's no other. He rules over England. He rules Can't over Camel- all of England. Cam- Camelot is the castle. I thought it was the uh, basically the city. Yes, the castle is the city. See, this is very complicated now. This is not how we do it in America. So, like, there's yeah. walls, right? There's a series of walls around the castle. Oh. So it's like a city within the walls. Okay. So what is what is the land between these walls? England. Who Everything owns that England. land? So the entirety... The king, the king owns all the land. So the entirety, the entirety of England is technically a castle because it's got a wall around it. So there's the king, right? Right. There's... The land, there's the land barons, there's right. the knights, and they have land as well, and they have their own castles, and they have their own little armies, but all of them swear fealty to the king, and they pay taxes to the king. Fair, I get all that. But Do you? Because I'm trying to explain it, and you guys don't, don't seem to be getting well, but it. You're, you're, you're well, contradic- how, how countries work. <laughs> it's just, but this isn't countries. You're, you're saying that the castle is also the state of Camelot. Or the no, city Camelot, of Camelot is the name of the castle. The castle right. Castles are fucking huge. So, but, but you've mentioned that Camelot, you treated it like a geographic location before. Okay, Camelot isn't real. It is not a geographic location. This is a made-up story. <laughs> but it takes place in a real place called they've England. Done, they've done a poor job of making me care about this. Like, well, why this is... Why do I care about the conflicts between these characters? Okay. So, like, it's weird. Like, I don't, I'm not too sure if this is supposed to be England because at this time, England wasn't, like, necess- England is just the name of the island, but it's, it was split up into a bunch of different... Uh, right. lands right and then right. king arthur when he pulled the sword from the stone mm-hmm. united those lands in making it england so that's how england came to be well in, according to that myth but not really i mean i would think we would have documentation of that okay this well very... that's because king arthur isn't real it's most likely yes. based wait, off wait, of... wait what yeah it's not real it's a fable most likely came from tribal ireland it's not a very interesting story. It's not an interesting enough story to still be carried on. Yes, it, it is. It's not an interesting enough read comic <laughs> to ra- like carry an episode. We have right. not talked about this comic oh, at right. all. Like, like, like the King Arthur book is really Shay, good. It's a I'm cool a, story. I no, a, I'm just saying that we I need like a super that's, cut of Shay bad. not liking being here. I don't think Shay likes it because of how masculine this story is. Hor- a, but as a woman, wouldn't you really like all the horse riding? 
Right. Don't you appreciate the horses except for that one that got its head chopped off on the Shay, very first just, panel? Are you, just, are you just fantasizing about brushing the horse's manes? Are you just focusing on the dressage? Would you like to braid the hair from the horse's tail? <laughs> you did have a lot of Barbies. <laughs> you know Barbies aren't horses, right? Barbies had horses. I guarantee you there was like a, a, yeah, there a is, stable Barbie. Yeah, there is horse-obsessed Barbie. I remember that I one. Horse girl it. Barbie. Yeah, horse girl sure. Barbie. The worst of all the girls. <laughs> yeah, wearing those jodhpurs with a riding crop. All the, all the horse girls are just tuning out now. They're yeah. like, well, fuck this show. <laughs> well, we were trying to get the horse people on, on board, and we just failed Shit. at that. Shit. I actually liked riding horses as a kid. Yeah, I bet you, you did, you millionaire. Horses? You millionaire. You rode no, horses? No. No, I no, I don't mean like and I had pony. horses that I went and rode frequently or something like <laughs> anyone that. Anyone who had a pony growing up. I hate anyone who had a pony. <laughs> no, they would have them at like the it's carnivals from, or it's something. It's from Seinfeld. It's a when, I was in, uh, when I was in high school, my last two years, I worked at a horse stable and I rode horses. Yeah, there you go. See? So I shoveled a wow. great deal of shit. It's the only time there was anything stable in Mike's life. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've lived in the same neighborhood for 12 years. That's true. I don't know if that's sad or impressive. It's actually awesome. It's yeah. the best neighborhood in the city. So the real Black Knight shows up. So, okay, here's the deal. Sir Guy is faking being the Black Knight because he's angry at the Black Knight. Uh, and so he's successfully gotten the real Black Knight banned. But apparently this isn't good enough for him. So now mm -hmm. the Black Knight wants to confront the real, the fake Black Knight wants to confront the real Black Knight in public for what reason? I don't know. And some guy has his archers, and his plan was that when, when the real Black Knight shows up, he was just going to gun him down. Yeah, he says, Bowman, loose your shafts, right in public, where anyone and can the, see. And the King of England, uh, who wasn't paying attention because he was just too embarrassed, embarrassingly thinking about his best friend plowing his wife, and he like <laughs> snaps out of it. It's like, wait a minute, you guys should just joust about it. Yep. And then Sir Guy is like, oh shit, I wasn't planning on actually having to do this. <laughs> And so they have a nice joust. By the way, Merlin is mentioned in here, and I guess Merlin is Black Knight's buddy, but he can't help this time because he's away dealing with his arthritis. Mm -hmm. What a weird detail to throw in there. I'll tell you what's weird. Merlin, in the book, is lives his life backwards. Oh, yeah? He started out as a dying old man, and, he, and he's going to end his life as a baby being born. Oh, but he doesn't know time backwards. Like He's not experiencing the time backwards. Yes. He is. He is. So he's already know he knows the future, but he doesn't yes. know the past. Kind of yes. like me. I can make yes. a lot of predictions about the future. I have no idea what happened in the past. That is it. Merlin is the son of a demon. And wow. He experiences life backwards. That's actually pretty cool. That's a yes. far more the interesting is, story. The book is really good. I can I can see why they had to take him out of the comic book. It's far too <laughs> interesting. <laughs> he shows up. Kids are just going to want to hear about Merlin. And he was played by that guy from Jurassic Park in the TV movie. Oh, yeah? yeah Jeff some, Goldblum? No, the other Sam guy. Sam Neill? Sam Neill plays Merlin in a, in a TV Wayne Knight? miniseries. You know, it yeah. should have been Wayne Knight with his last name and all. Mm. He's, play, he's playing uh, some guy. <laughs> he's playing Newman. Let's just imagine that <laughs> Wayne Knight is some guy in this book. I'll just tie this as tightly as I can to Seinfeld. Yeah. To, so, to, to Shay's chagrin. Chagrin? chagrin? Notice, how, like, chagrin. Uh, notice how they had like spears and jousting material and swords and war horses, yeah. but no one fucking dies. Not one. No, no one dies. Uh, the real Black Knight defeats the fake Black Knight and exposes him as Sir Guy. Mm -hmm. And apparently the king probably has a problem with this. Uh, he just like, he knocks him off his horse by, uh... I know they still try to shoot arrows at him, but I guess his armor is enchanted. By Merlin. Yeah, Which makes Merlin you wonder, is... why isn't Merlin enchanting all the armor? Why doesn't just... Merlin do this stuff himself? Yeah, right. Why isn't <laughs> Merlin the king of England? I would be that. <laughs> Shit. Uh, so, yeah, the story just kind of ends like that. Uh, Sir Percy, a.k.a. the Black Knight, makes uh, one more plea for Lady Rosamund, who won't even look at him anymore. Right, she uh, hates him. Yeah, she does despise Yeah, that she guy. absolutely despises this man. So, That's right, but as the Black Knight, he negs himself by throwing a rose to her, and she gets all soppy wet. Oh, God. But back uh, then, it, uh, it was hard to be horny because everyone smelled like shit. Yeah, and you were wearing chain mail all the time, and it really well, hurt if you got an erection. You know, they just had to constantly wear layers because of how cold they were. So after that, we've got another ad, which... I wasn't necessarily going to dwell on, but considering Mike brought up the previous ad, and I think this is way more insane, mm -hmm. uh, it's an ad about how to make a small fortune in your spare time. Mm -hmm. 
And this dude in the suburbs uh, is approaching his neighbor who bought a new car. He's like, how the hell is this poor son of a bitch buying this car? And why Shoes! He, and why is he getting out of his car on the passenger side? Shoes. Right. Just he driving. scooted over. Yes, yes, Shay. He is selling shoes it's to all his about coworkers. Shoes. You think Al Bundy saw this ad and was like, this is the way to go to make money, selling shoes. Uh, man, I love Married with Children. Except for all that problematic stuff, which is most of it. Yep, which is uh, my favorite part. <laughs> So, yeah, this this is an advertisement telling grown adults, by the way. this is These are all adults in this ad. Yeah, sell shoes, you poor bastard. Sell shoes. Annoy your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers by uh, bringing them a big case of shoes and having them buy them. Now, hold on, James. Now, imagine, like, you're putting on your shoes, right? And the soles just, I've done bust, it before. just bust right out of them, Busting right? out. And you're yeah. like, shit. What am I going to do? I own one pair of shoes. And then right. you hear a knock on the door, and it's the the local door-to-door shoe salesman coming to save the day. Uh, I'm going to assume that the previous night he broke into my house and started sawing all of the bottoms of my soles off of my shoes. Hey, you don't like capitalism? Yeah. Divine providence. I, go, I, there's, go back to Argentina, you <laughs> pinko. There's a panel here where he goes to his neighbors and he goes, hey man, it's been two months since I've called on you. Do you need some new shoes? Because the shoes I sold you are garbage. And the neighbor says, oh yeah, I actually do need another pair because I fucked up my old pair. I fucked up my old, old, mm-hmm. old, old pair beating up my son by kicking his ass. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, if, sh- sh- if your shoes aren't lasting but two months, those aren't good exactly. shoes. If your you shoes don't last longer than two months, you must be a live event technician. <laughs> Yeah, he. Uh, I'm assuming he used those shoes in his automatic spanking machine for his child. And that's I, wore out burn, so I fucking burn through shoes. Yeah, yeah, you do a lot of grunty manual labor kind of things. Look at James sticking his nose up at me. Fuck you. Yeah, it's, it's shameful. It's shameful. You're going to be uncouth. replaced by a robot. I'm only planning to work for a few more years. What do I care? Yeah, we'll I got a couple see. of years on it. We'll see. Uh, I mean, We're, you know, we're going to be toxic dude, plume sweepers. I'm, re- I'm retiring by 30. That's the plan. <laughs> that you were 20, and you said two years. I said a few years. Your lies are I, falling apart. I said a few yeah, years. Yeah, a, few, a few years, years is years. only three to four years. No, a few, few years is delightfully vague. <laughs> a few Just years like can be me. anywhere between three and 30. You're a snooty cunt. Fuck you. Yeah, no, I'm not a snooty cunt. I did all that shit, too. I did all that manual bullshit. I love it. Well past the body. age, well past the age when I was supposed to stop doing that, I was still that's doing why, it. That's why I'm lean and just yeah. cut like a goddamn diamond. Yep, it's working out great. Yeah, it really is. Uh, here's another story starring the Black Knight. It's basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. And in this one, uh, the knight, uh, the Black Knight, and uh, King Arthur are riding with some dude who uh, gets off on just beating homeless people. Which is what they did back then. <laughs> Which they did, yeah. And it takes and the now. it takes the Black Knight uh, tell him, "Hey man, maybe knock that shit off." He's gonna whip him. He's like, "I know it'll make us laugh." Make it, having this poor person dance to me whipping him. He's trying to entertain the king by brutally assaulting a homeless man. What if man? he did that and the Black Knight wasn't around and King Arthur was like, "Ah, <laughs> yes." <laughs> You know, That's the, peasant. The Black Knight's not going to like this, but keep it up. Keep it up. He's like, oh, the Black Knight's here ruining our fun. Oh, God. Hey, you know what? I'm the king. Black Knight, who the hell are you? <laughs> Why don't you take the fucking trash can off your head? He wears a trash can on his head. What if, like, the Black Knight is just while they're riding around, he's practicing his loot, and he's like, why, why are you doing that, Black Knight? Because I have no reason. Uh, the king's thinking he winks at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> King's thinking, that pretty little guy sure can't finger that loot. Oh and my then they goodness. notice that there's a camera. Yes. <laughs> the hell is that? Uh, so it turns out that <laughs> the homeless man lives in an abandoned castle. So he's not homeless at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were he just has using a, castle. A, a generic nomenclature. Well, so, okay, he's a, so he's a lord. He's a squatter. He didn't, like, they, they, they arrested the dude who owned the castle, and he just decided, I can live here now. Right. Why didn't a bunch of people move in? It's a party castle. Yeah, right? Mm. That's, what I call, that's what I call my pants. <laughs> 24-7. Black Knight finds this amusing, and then he rides off as he naturally He's like, oh, poor man living in a castle. Outrageous! Now I've seen everything, and he leaves. That's the sound effect we should get. Aquaman yelling out outrageous. Oh, that's that is pretty, pretty good. Mm. That's pretty appropriate, yeah. Play uh, Voiced by, uh, what's his name, who was on Married with Children. 
What, what is his know. name? Uh, Sam oh, McGinnis. Oh, the guy Ted, Ted the, McGinley. The handsome Ted neighbor. McGinley. Yeah. Ted McGinley, that winner. The... Yeah, right. Yeah, really. He was on. He was on a lot of hit shows. Well, no, he's he's considered the patron saint of jumping the shark because he I was, was about on to so say. Many... Well, he hold on, on now. The, yeah. the the show lasted for like four more years after they that. Did was that was his one time where they didn't. Uh, where it wasn't canceled immediately after. And he was on Married right. with Children for a super long That's time. That's what I'm talking about, Married with Children. What else? What are you, ta- what are you ta- referring to? Uh, he was on, uh, uh, I guess, those two things. Mm-hmm. He was on a bunch of things. and He's it's not, in Revenge of the Nerds? I'll, be, to be fair, it's not his fault that everything got canceled after he was hired. It was just, you know, there would be big shakeups and shows were already failing and they were trying to recast and everything and they would pull him in. And it's not his fault, but then shows would get canceled because they were all around the bubble. So he came to be associated with shows that were about to get canceled. Yep, he's uh, yeah, he's gonna weep all the way to his giant house. I don't, I don't know how well he's doing, but I'm sure he's got a giant house. I'm sure he's a great man. Residuals, happy days, residuals. Yeah, happy days. Yeah, he was in Happy Days. Was he in Happy Days? Is he old yeah. enough to have been in Happy Days? Yeah. Wow, good for him. Yeah, he was in. That's why I said that jumping the shark. Uh, I thought he was just metaphorically. Spe- no, I don't think he was actually there. Yeah, he was there. He was in the, oh, wow, I thought they just, like, retroactively gave no, him that title. No, no, he was in Happy Days for a number of years. Yes. Wow. Nobody knows what the fuck we're talking about. He may have suggested that whole Jumping the Shark thing. Look up Jumping the Shark. If me, a 20-year-old, can figure out all these old internet things, you can too. Mm-hmm. Old internet things, that doesn't make any sense. Old internet things? Jumping the Shark, I first heard about probably in, like, 2004 or no, something. No, the oldest internet thing I, I, use is, I used was Newgrounds. The oldest internet thing I remember was all your base are belong to us. Mm-hmm. And Classic pedofi- memes. And pedophile chat rooms. And pedophile chat rooms getting broken up by Barry Crimmins, the greatest hero in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so uh, Sir Percy sneaks his way back into the castle. Uh, he wipes off his blade. Uh, he, he, he puts on his loot in his fanciest tunic. You keep calling him Sir Percy. Yeah, he's I do. A, I he's do. not a sir. You're, and you're the right. Black Knight is not a sir either. You would think they could at least let the Black Knight be a sir. Well, You'd no, they have, to, they have to know what his real name is. No, not necessarily. Which I still don't understand why he has secret identity at all. It doesn't it really Merlin. make a lot of sense. Yeah. It was, it was just Merlin playing, having fun. Well, we see clearly he, he's Percy, not Merlin. Well, Merlin, I'm saying like, he, all of his powers come from Merlin. Yeah. Like his armor Merlin, and his sword, yeah. those are Merlin Merlin's doings. I mean, he's got to be a bored guy. He knows how the future turns out. Right. He knows about advanced math. Yeah. These people around him are idiots. I'll be honest. I don't remember what happened in the story. In fact, I've got the uh, the Marvel fandom wiki open with the synopses for the stories because I could not remember any of this shit. Uh, I remember this one, but it's like the story about the Crusades. I have no idea what the fuck was going on. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we just let's talk through this story and then I'll just uh, t- tell us what you remember about this story and then we'll piece together the Crusader one. So, like uh, the evil knight whose castle is now being uh, housed by a beggar, who mm-hmm. they even refer to him as the beggar. Mm-hmm. They do. He who, he was exiled. He but refers now... to himself as the beggar. Yeah, because he's <laughs> he's very he, proud of it. Because he's self-aware and not ashamed. Good for him. Very very based beggar. Mm-hmm. Well, the well the the evil knight returns home to kill Arthur and to become king of England himself. Ooh. And he has a cooking cooking bib on. Okay. Uh, by the way, a quick uh, side note here as I'm looking this up, he is Sir Percy. All right. Everywhere I see, he's referred to as Sir Percy of Scandia. All right. Doesn't make any sense. No, is Scandia is. Scandinavia? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's probably just like a like a province that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, we don't need to get the geography any more convolu- convoluted than it already is. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Maybe, so anyway, I mean, I mean, at the time, uh, uh, the most powerful nation in England was called Wessex. So where did we leave off here, anyway? Where is the story going? What's happening here? Now, so now uh, they are trying to lay siege to the evil knight in his castle, but apparently he's dug trenches and filled them with lions. And I believe Merlin supplied some intel about where the 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 no no traps beggar were. No? Yeah, beggar, the beggar man knew where they were. Oh, the beggar knew where they were. Tibbet was that his name? Yeah, Tibbet the beggar, and uh, he uh, told the Black Knight how to sneak into the castle without being okay. seen. So the Black Knight sneaks into the castle. Uh, he has to take off most of his armor. Mm-hmm. He probably didn't have to take off his shirt, but he did anyway because he's got kicking abs. Yeah, he looks great. And uh, let's the see evil... them come, gutters. The... That's right. And the mm-hmm. evil knight releases his herd of elephants. Yeah, so he releases a herd of elephants. Uh, 
to fight against uh, King Arthur's forces. I love how the evil giant knight never wears pants. They do have an evil giant knight. Where is he? Is he in here? Where yeah, is you're he? You're passing him a great deal of times. He's right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's well, he's kind of blocking it. He's blocking it a little bit with a shield. He's got yeah, a little bit of shield. You see the next panel over, he's got no pants. He's wearing his little underwear. Oh, man. So yeah. this is so uh, the Black Knight beats the giant with his ebony blade. Mm -hmm. And he Interesting. saves the kidnapped king of England, which I guess he was kidnapped at some point. <laughs> And so, doing so lures uh, the evil knight and his army out of the castle where they can now fight in open combat, but they are oh, no match yeah. for Excalibur and the Ebony Blade. I vaguely remember this now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So things work out okay. And, and then... even, though they're, even though they're fighting with swords, no one dies. Never, ever, ever do people die. And then, you know, what? Right, even right here, it says Sir Percy, smiling Sir Percy. He's, yeah, he's referred to not, as Sir he's Percy. Not a sir. I, he's an honorary sir, like when maybe you get an his, honorary PhD. Maybe his father was. So you can inherit that title. So maybe his father was a knight. That would make sense why he was even invited into the castle in the first place. Yes, yeah, that inherit, would. You can inherit an item, a, a yeah. knightendom. Uh, so he's there entertaining the king. Yep. With his loot again. Doing Playing that. Iron Maiden. Yeah. On his loot. <laughs> I did the look up... The, the king is headbanging. I did look up some pretty kick-ass loot covers of metal songs. And there's, yeah. some good, there's some good shit out there, to be honest with you. Yeah, of course you. there is. Of course. I mean, the crossover in the demographics is pretty it's good. the same. There's a, I mean, there's all the various medieval night metal yeah. bands. <laughs> so, then we've got a text story, which... Uh, I didn't read. Fuck this. Yeah. I didn't read it. This is when it starts getting a little dicey because it has to do with uh, Muslims trying to invade England. Well, uh, no, it wasn't. It was about the Crusades. I'm sorry. It's that they, they explicitly talk about the Muslims as their enemies. I understand that, but they're talking about the Crusades where they, they, the English and the European knights were in the Holy Land battling the Muslims for the land itself, for Jerusalem. And there was like 10 Crusades. Like They kept doing it. And they kept conquering each other over and over again. But because of the Crusades, that's how uh, Europe got uh, advanced mathematics and medical treatments mm -hmm, from, their, mm -hmm. from their encounters with the uh, Middle Eastern peoples. The text story basically boils down to this dude, King Richard, and uh, they've intercepted an enemy, but the enemy is actually a double agent that King Richard actually was sending over to the other side. I'm That's... pretty sure King Richard was the king of Jerusalem. Oh, yeah? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, doing pretty well for himself. Mm -hmm. How do I know all this stuff? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Right? And it's not applicable outside of this comic book, I mean, which is a bummer. I, 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 do, I, I don't know. I like history. Yeah. Uh, At this time, though, during the Dark Ages, the most advanced city in the world was Baghdad. Oh, yeah? Yes. Until, How's it doing now? Until the reason why it got all fucked up is because Genghis Khan and his army showed up and obliterated it and then left for a week and then came back to kill all the people who were hiding. Well, there was also that time that Outcast dropped bombs over Baghdad, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, so, yeah, the text story is not really important nor good. Uh, and then we've got this story with this other character, the Crusader. The artwork is actually done by John Romita. It's the only time the artwork varies. Mm -hmm. Here is a story about a man who was raised in the Middle East as a Muslim mm -hmm. and instead found out that he was uh, born from Christians, so he switches sides. Is that really what happens? I, this is how much yes. I spaced out on this story. Yeah. Well, that was common because a lot of crusaders, so when in order to entice knights and soldiers into fighting the crusades, mm -hmm. the, the Catholic Church, which ran mm -hmm. most everything back then, promised them carte blanche on all their sins while they were having their crusades so they could do whatever they want. So there was a lot of abandoned children in that part of the world from them. I don't feel that's represented super well in this story. No, they don't want to talk about how English knights would rape people to death. Was it really, like, if you're a kid in 1955, is any of this stuff interesting? Was there a time where, where little boys, and girls perceivably, but mostly boys were interested in this stuff? Well, I, I hold just... on. well now James, now think about it. I know about all this stuff, so clearly at one point I was a little boy. Right. I was interested. Fair, fair. Uh, is that widespread? I don't know. Enough I don't... where they made a comic book about it. I mean, also, it's nineteen. I mean, look at all the movies they made. Yeah, that's fair. I guess somebody's really into this. I mean, I, I just, like it. 
I just don't think that these comics, I'm sure there are great ways to tell these stories and make them exciting and engaging, but this this comic just does not make me care about these conflicts at all. When I was a kid, my favorite series of books was Conan the Barbarian. You were a big Conan guy. I still am. Those books are amazing. All right, so that's the gist of this story. I don't even know how to talk about this story. Well, there was uh, uh, one of their agents, right, from the white Mm -hmm. uh, English-speaking side of the Crusades. They send him over to do some stuff, and he gets captured, and so they dress another guy up as an old man to go get him out. And because the Muslim people were a lot nicer than the British people, they just let him in. They let him in to have his water, but then, yeah. and now they they'll because of this experience, they'll never be nice to strangers again. Thanks a lot, King wow. of Jerusalem, you <laughs> bitch. See, see, now now it's interesting. Now I'm on board. Mm-hmm. Now, also, one of the, I think the first uh, King of Jerusalem was a leper, and he was referred to as the Leper King. They made a movie about it called The Kingdom of Heaven. Oh. Who, wow. Who's in that? Is that a great uh, movie? Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom. The mm. Kingdom of Heaven. Uh, let's just look at the, the box art for this. Yeah, there he is. There's the Leper King with his mask. Yeah. That's yeah, a nice that, mask. that happened. That was a true story. Good mm. Lord. Okay. Yeah. I'm just looking for anything to talk about in this, this so, boring-ass book. Guys, how do you guys not know about the various crusades? How do you, How, you guys never read any of the King Arthur stories? No, I did not read the King Arthur stories. You don't stories. know about the Crusades. You don't know how countries work in the Middle Ages. I think I had to read the Canterbury Tales in high school. Okay. Okay, I guess that's close. There's a lot of knowledge out there to absorb, and it's not all, all right. about fucking kings and fiefdoms. So I don't know anything about math. Yeah. Not a goddamn thing. Like, I need a pen- paper and pencil to do basic right. math. Well, I'll make sure to mock you about it when we do a math episode next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next time on Dark Side's Couch, Look, math. There's there's a lot of stuff that sticks for me, but ancient European history does not mm-hmm. stick with me. And also, none of that may be real. It may have been made Great. up by, by chieftains who wanted to legitimize their claims to, king, to being kings. So they Great. made up a lineage that may, not, may or may not have happened. What a great what a great use of my time memorizing they, all they that. They think that a lot of the Holy Ro- Roman Empire with like Charlemagne may not have been real either. That, that somebody made all that up. All right, do we even need to do any more more with this crusader character? Uh, so like uh, they figured out that uh, this plot was done by another dude who wanted to be the king of Jerusalem and they said to him, "Hey, if you try that again, we may punish you." <laughs> All right, well, we're officially never doing one of these comics again. Right, this is, right, this is, this is terrible. Right. Uh, finally, mercifully, I think we're coming to... You know, I've, I think I've come to hate this comic more over the course of recording this episode. I was, yeah. a lo- I was First, I was worried I was being a little too harsh on it, and now uh, I think I, uh, I, I'm justified in my hatred. This I is think a bad I, comic. I think it's just exposing your ignorance of, of history. Right. Well, uh, let's be... Clear here, my ignorance of this part of history, not all of history everywhere forever. Mm-hmm. European Dark Ages where people lived in shit. That's what I hear. Why they would I want to know in, about that? They lived in crumbling buildings and built by the Romans a thousand years uh, uh, in the past. Well, that sounds like a bummer. Why would I want that? Why would That's I want to know anything about that? Lived. And then they like mm-hmm. threw, they tossed hot oil at each other. Mm-hmm. Well, that was for fun. Yeah, just something to do. Right. Something here's to do. The, here's the continued story we didn't read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I told. I gave you the two line synopsis of it. Of how I'm it works good. out. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I fine. Re- I ain't cares? reading. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> I know. I just what I do read. See. Yeah. You're making a pro. You're laying things for me to be <laughs> tripped up on later. All right. I probably don't read nearly as much as I should. Well, that's true. Of I read a lot of everybody. comics. I read, do read a lot of comic books. True of most people. All right, we've got one last Black Knight story. Mercifully, one last one. Really flesh out the Black Knight mm-hmm. and all this great potential as this character has. Yep. Uh, so in this story, uh, there are horses, riding horses. Yep. I like how one horse it seems to be glad that that guy isn't riding on him anymore. Yes. <laughs> he just he found out it was the last story, and he's very. He's excited. like, he's got spurs in his boots. Good, get that son of a bitch. That's a shitty thing to do. Yeah, that is a shitty thing to do. You should horses do are that. horses are so close to being people that you really yep. should treat them with some respect. And you should. I yeah. worked at a horse stable for two years. They are people. They they mean well. They're trying their best. Mm-hmm. They're massive. Yep. If horses ever decide to take over, like there's nothing you can do. Yeah, we're living in a horse world. You ever seen a Clyde a Clydesdale in real life? Yeah, they're gigantic. They are. They're like dinosaurs. Yeah. Really? It's oh my goodness. Yeah, they're big. They're big. You don't even reach their shoulder. They're, no, they're huge. Yeah, they're gigantic animals. 
But They're humans created massive. those those animals, though. Is that a breeding thing? Yeah, like it's a pug. A thing. It's the yeah. pug of horses. Yeah. Well, we needed we needed Budweiser mascots. Yeah, we sure did. We the need worst, something re- the worst <laughs> beverage in the world. We need the greatest animal to prop up the worst beverage. How is all these beers, like these these horrible horrible beers, being drank by people? Is it just advertising? I mean, I think it's I think it's palate because my father drank a lot of my father drank a lot of that shit first of all i don't drink it all tastes disgusting to me my understanding is a beer is sort of like on the lower level of of quality and budweiser and budweiser is like the low the lowest of the lower or or damn close blue ribbon i was gonna say yeah no natty light pbr those are lower than miller well what i would say is my father as a person of low income and, and low curiosity, uh, I think he was cool with that because he just is never exposed to anything better. And He's I think like, hell was, yeah, beer me. I, if you weren't exposed to anything better, that's what you're, if you, all you eat is McDonald's, your palate truly believes that that is the best food. That's what I grew up on believes. American food and I only like American food. Yeah. I think we all kind of, if you, whatever you grew up with is kind of what you're used to. So like yeah. I want, I want diner food. I want to have breakfast for three meals a day. I want yeah. cheeseburgers. I good. want a steak. I want Man, spaghetti. James made waffles today. You were missing out. I want I had to come move in with him. I uh, no. I bought no. I bought a waffle maker specifically so I could make uh heavily uh heavy carb, heavy protein waffles Hell yeah. to go on runs. And so I yeah, that's all I load these waffles up with eggs and milk and, and all kinds of good things and yeah, and then I go on a 16-mile run like I did earlier this week, and then I almost died. I didn't do a 16-mile run, but today I did an 11-mile run. No. Damn. I did. I you did. did not run 11 miles. I did. Why I can't you believe that? I did uh, I did 100 pull-ups, I did 200 squats, and then I ran for 11 miles. How did you run 11 miles? Where did you go? I went along the lakefront. And... I ran to 31st Street Beach, head north, and then turn around. And what's the longest you've run until that point, like recently, before recently, that. I don't Cause, know. Because if you never, if you weren't running already, like six or eight or nine miles, running eleven miles, you're gonna be dead. Well, I'm pretty active already. It, yeah, but it's yeah. not the same thing. It's not. It, you could be very, I very I active. To, I don't want to tell you. I ran eleven miles. I don't want to tell you. I ran. I ran all the way there and I ran back. I took a. I took a couple breaks, but not too many. Okay, you okay? Okay, that's a little different. If you did take a couple breaks, well, you know, Fair. I stop for a second, catch my breath, and then I'm keep not saying going. It's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's not a good thing or an impressive thing, but it's like it, you just never want me to succeed at I, anything. I was about I, to say, geez, James, yeah, other just, people can oh, yeah. run. You're, you're seething after I've I, been that I, that I was inspired by you. Uh huh. <laughs> First of all, you lead with that. He you learned it from you, inspired. Dad. You really, now you're seething because of it. You're like I one of those jealous, like rich moms. I've been getting beaten down. For an hour 20 on this episode. James broke the glass ceiling and then put mm-hmm. it all back together mm-hmm. afterwards mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. no one I, else can run. I just wanted to keep up with you, James. That's all I'm doing. Right. Oh. Trying to keep, trying to keep up with you. No, you guys are you guys are assholes. You're sandbagging me now, through this whole episode. Now, is it because I can't stand the idea of James being more shredded than me? That's probably part of it. Well, I'm in a weird spot because... The the running burns all the fat off, but then yep. I'm also putting on extra weight, like deliberately trying to put on extra weight. And I don't know exactly how that's going to shake out. It's hard. It's hard. When you're doing a great deal of cardio, like what yeah. you're doing, putting on muscles is really difficult. But you eat a shit ton. I do eat a, a comical amount. Like, I don't. Like, I yeah. eat pretty, I keep it pretty light. No, no. I mean, I don't, I, do a, I don't do a great deal of cardio. I just have really good endurance. Yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out by the time I run the marathon in October. We'll see well, what I'm looking like. Well, you're going to take two tabs of acid like I suggested. Well, I'm running it naked. I'm just wearing that bib. <laughs> you will if you take two so, tabs of acid. Yeah. You sure will. <laughs> no. This cold, is all but... really interesting, and I'm really happy that you guys are, are doing this, but I'm sitting here thinking about how I'm going to try to get McDonald's for dinner. <laughs> yeah, Shay is a big fan of Mickey D's. I Okay, I'll... no, no, no. Don't say that. She is. She likes her fast food just fine. She is not a big food. fan. <laughs> she is not a big fan of Mickey D's, and she has not had Mickey D's in like years. All right, you. Uh, first of all, I don't think. Okay, maybe maybe that's true that you haven't had Mickey D's in a while, but you've had a lot of raisin canes and a lot of Taco Bell. Uh, I Taco said Bell's I like really fast good. food. I didn't say <laughs> raisin canes is good too. I, I like that you you are proud of your fast food connection, but as soon as it turns to McDonald's, 
No, like, I wanted on, to stress that I wasn't sitting around eating a bunch of Stick McDonald's. I, mean, well, I, was just, I was just in Arizona, and I had Also, I don't box. eat fast food four times a week or something. It was good. What did you have, Jack in the Box? Yeah, Jack in the Box. Well, you know what? Normally, she... when, I'm on, normally when I'm on the road, all I have is just like a jar of peanut butter, random fruit, those cart, those little cartons of muscle milk, and like the gummy multivitamins. Shay, you can get away with it because you're a tiny, cute girl. Mm-hmm. So nobody says like, oh, that's disgusting. Stop eating the fast food. Like, you're allowed to. A tiny, cute horse girl. Yeah, really into horses. Super into horses. Horses and pee. That's That's it. <laughs> Horse yeah, pee. Well, if you're going to get peed on. No, no, no. Not horse pee. That is very different. That, that, that stream will knock her on her ass. Yeah, exactly. That's violent. I don't want violence. Right? And then she'll be crushed by the horse's weight when it becomes <laughs> aroused. I like a gentle urination, a gentle sprinkling of a golden shower. I don't want a torrential downpour from well, a how the hell do you can, How do you control that? How do you give someone a gentle sprinkling? Isn't it just going to come out how it comes out? I'm going to squeeze the bottom of it. There's probably like a filter you can put on, like a garden hose. When you're pressed for time, you just try to push it all out. <laughs> I try that. Yeah, you can only, it's very frustrating because you think if you push harder, it's going to come out faster and it no, won't. No, it doesn't. You're just squeezing the urethra. There's a threshold where you just can't go any harder. Mm-hmm. You're not like a, one of those shower heads with the different settings. <laughs> you, need to, you need to open up that head a little bit. All right Now you could pour your pee into some kind of contraption yeah. connected to a shower head. You know, well, that's what I was saying. You, there's, I bet somebody has manufactured some sort of adapter that you put on your penis mm-hmm. that that's basically like a uh, a hose, a golden a garden shower. Hose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could call it the golden shower. I don't know. You put it on a hose, and you can uh, select different spray settings. I don't know. I, I, that seems to take away the romance of it all. Yeah, it's a little less special that way. Well, like the hose a, is pink. Like it's like wearing a condom. <laughs> the, the spontaneity the of the urination is gone. Ah. Uh, no, you can't be doing spon- spontaneous urination. It's got to be, you got to plan that out. Don't just spring it on somebody. No, no, no spontaneous pee play unless it's been discussed no, beforehand. Yep. You got to yeah. you gotta, you gotta, be surprising folks at grandma's get, funeral. Get consent. Probably want to record it just in case there's any sort of dispute later on. Mm-hmm. Get it all down. And then down. send it to darksidescouch send at gmail.com. Send it on in. If you're into pee play, please contact us immediately. We'll run out of comic books. We'll go through your pee videos. Yeah, right? We're on Black Knight. Yeah, well, this is just pretty much this is the bottom of the barrel. This is the end. I think we killed enough time. We can pretend to care about this story. Yeah. So they drag King Arthur off his horse. All, all these comics seem to be King Arthur gets in some kind of jam because he's distracted about him being cucked so badly. He's a terrible king. And here, this uh, giant Frenchman, yeah. who, who's paid off by Mordred, who is uh, Arthur's son. Nephew. Here they call here they call him his nephew. Yeah, no, he is his nephew. He's not his son. Yeah, in the, well, I'm going to tell you right now, Mordred is King Arthur's son. No, Shay is I googled back. it. Shay's pushing back. Really? Is that true? Yeah, I googled it. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm going to see okay. if you're wrong. I'm see if I you're mean, wrong. of course, fictional characters, uh, their relationships is are kind of Mordred. Wow, Mike Arthur's stuff up son is, is the first thing that popped up. And it says yes? And it says yes, he is Arthur's bastard son by his he- half-sister, uh, Mor- 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 Morgos? But okay, that's weird. That was Morgana, but I guess they changed it. I guess you guys are getting different uh, you, uh, Google filter results. There's a lot of different translations of this story. Yeah. There's a lot. There's one where like like uh, Morgana is not evil and some that she is. It's different. Uh, I'm getting a little frustrated with the fact that you can look up anything on Google and find something that will support whatever crazy-ass idea you have. All right. Well, let's try that. Is uh, Mordred not, King I'm, Arthur's nephew? I don't know. Let's put that yeah, in try, try to look it up. Look it up. Nephew. All right. That popped up, too. As Mordredus, this is from Wiki, Mordred was depicted as Arthur's traitorous nephew and a legitimate son of King Lot of Geoffrey of Monmouth's pseudo-historical oh, I don't so even know what boring. all that fucking was. <laughs> uh, it says here, who King Arthur's Later nephew variants was Later variants yeah, later variants, uh, later variants often characterized him as Arthur's villainous bastard son, born of an incestuous relationship with his half sister, named either Anna, or Cadus, or Morgos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're all right. This is fascinating. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I like mine better. Yeah, it hooked could not. This, it could not matter. Sexy. Look at the sexy sister. Could not matter less. She was pretty sexy in the movie, I gotta say. So this is uh, Mordred. It's not Mordred. It's Mord. What is his name again? Uh, it's uh, it's just uh, M- Mordred. 
Mordred. Well, it no, is Mordred. it's Modred. Modred. Oh, yes, right. okay, That's there the we thing. go. That's what's going up. So Modred has paid off uh, these uh, French dudes to uh, sabotage King Arthur's uh, crew, I believe. Mm-hmm. And one of them is dressed like Magneto. That's that's Percy. That's Sir Percy. And uh, he, he's pretending he was, to faint. He was on his way to the comic book convention, and he was Magneto. <laughs> so he pretends to faint so that he can get out of there as the Black Knight. Well, what he does is he heroically uh, gets free and dives into the water, avoiding the hail of arrows. It's interesting because they're treating him, uh, rightfully so, as like a prissy little guy who, who can't take care of himself and, and he's passing out from you know the the stress of the day and everything but when he jump he jumps into the water and they're saying like get him get him we have to you can't let him swim to shore but like the impression they have of him he would never be able to swim to shore and he uh, he's a weakling. He, and he like escaped from 10 guys he like overpowered them yeah the, yeah there's a moment where clearly they didn't know how to get him out of the scenario so they just said fuck it he's got superpowers for just a moment and he does and he and breaks he, free. When he gets to land, he finds Excalibur and takes it back to Camelot. Which, oh, he does. Which is both a, a, a castle and also a city. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look that up later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So he gets he gets back to Castle Camelot, mm-hmm. and Modred has taken over. He's taken the throne, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, Sir Percy says, uh, "Well, uh, I've got this. I've got my ebony blade here, and I've got Excalibur." So uh, we got to head on out. We got to go rescue King Arthur. And I love, um, uh, here we see Merlin for the first time. Finally. And he's, and he's got a, and he's got the funkiest wizard hat you could imagine. He looks great. He looks like Moondog, the musician yeah. on the street. Yeah, he does. Uh, he looks like, he looks like Wizzo from the Bozo show. <laughs> do 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 He's my favorite guy. He's my favorite guy in this character because he, he's my favorite guy in this book because he doesn't overstay his welcome. You know, he just he shows, shows up, up, says awesome shit, and then bails. He could have solved this whole problem, but chose not to. That's kind of what he does. Not my pig, the, not my farm. That's what he does in the book too. Great, I love him. I love shows Merlin. up and just fuck shit up with bad advice. Merlin's awesome. I love this guy. He's my favorite character by far. There was another comic book that was like a weird twist on the tale where, uh, when Merlin the magician was heading to to castle to uh, meet young Arthur to guide him, a demon found him, killed him, and then took his place and then and did all that stuff just to fuck shit up for fun. Sweet. Why were we... We should be reading the Merlin comic. Yeah. It was, it was, I can't remember what it was fuck. called. Make me care about history. <laughs> Make me care about history. Make, care Make about me care about fictional history. Imagine James in school. He's like a middle school. He's like, Make me care. I'll tell you something. I actually got... Uh, I was in uh, AP US history and I took the, you know, the exam at the end of the year and I got college credit in U.S. history, and then never applied it to my college career. I never applied it. Well, it never mattered, because all that U.S. history class was just propaganda and lies. No, no, it was it was about how great the presidents are, mostly. Oh, yeah. How they've how all they been fantastic. Never did anything bad ever. No, nope, no. Nope. Never profited from their position. It's interesting how the good guys always win the wars. Yep. Every Thank, time in Thankfully. History. It's an interesting thankfully thing. Thankfully, good always wins. Yep. Good always triumphs over, yep. uh, over BlackRock. <laughs> so uh they start leading a strike uh against the the uh forces of Modred and his mm-hmm. and his French buddy. And for the second time, uh the Black Knight uses his ebony blade to cut King Arthur's chains off. Mm-hmm. It's just well it's a badass move. It is a badass move, right? Like when you like in the first panel where he cut that horse's head off. Yeah. So yeah, we've got the is that the king who was chained up, and he holds up his uh, King Arthur holds up his chain, and the Black Knight comes by on his horse, doesn't even get off the horse to just take his ebony blade and just chop right through. Yeah, in the beginning though, when he killed that horse, he was like he was fighting in that war, but then the horse yelled out a racial slur, and he cut the horse's head off and said, <laughs> "Cancel." Well, you can't you can't tolerate these kind of things. Right, every that's why that's the only people he does kill. If anyone who's cancelable. Yep. If you see something, you got to say something. That's the case. So he killed that lady. So, well, he loves her too much, as we're about to see. So, yeah, they, they siege against these guys, and they, they retrieve the king, and everything kind of goes back to normal. And then we've got this last page epilogue. I love this part where it's like, uh, he's like, Black Knight is kneeling before the king, and he's just like, I'm sure glad I know you, Black Knight. Yep. Just just stay right yeah. there, and then he snatches his helmet off real quick. Goes, aha! Well, just, gotcha! Just, just give me a peek. I just gotta know. Look at the head of I hair I mean, that's on the king thing Arthur. is that, like, he loves the king so much, I'm sure Arthur could just be like, 
I want to know. Yeah, you King, tell me who you are. Or he goes to Merlin and goes, who's that guy? Yeah, it's yeah exactly. King Arthur looks like he's in the Doobie Brothers. He does, right? He's like, <laughs> what? he's like, yes. he's the he's John Fogarty. <laughs> uh, he ain't no, no he absolutely son. knows what a fool believes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny because like Sir Percy is the fortunate son. Yes, and also a fool who yeah, believes right. he's going to get with Lady Rosamund one of these days. Right, he's not. Why does he just keep the helmet on? <laughs> and then fuck her. Just let her know. What's the problem here? Because then, because then he'll have to like date her, and she seems awful. Oh, I mean, he doesn't seem to be pursuing her as the Black Knight, so no, he's, he's only not. pursuing her as Percy. Yeah, sorta. This is really sorta. weird. He's she's not into it though. So like, uh, <laughs> they uh, those, so here they're like, all right, Modred, even though. Even though you're my my son, who who's from the sister I fucked, you, and you, you're kind you of usurped my throne, and you're kind of a dick. I'm gonna let it go because I'm, be because fine. because you're the son of a congressman, and I'm gonna sweep it under the rug. <laughs> King Arthur lets a lot of shit go. He's pretty based. He's like, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. I'm he's fifty. Like, I'm about to die anyway. He's like, I don't care. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's me. So, this is how I would rule. He's like, bro, my best friend's fucking my wife. Okay, the, my girlfriend's my sister. So, <laughs> okay, this is my son. He's clearly a, a, like some little douche. So we get to the final few panels, and Percy shows up wearing his fanciest pink tunic again. Notice how Lancelot is not in this comic. I, I guess not. Uh, I he guess ain't he's around. Busy. Yeah, he sure is. He's Notice back how, in the. Guinevere and Lancelot are not in this comic yeah, book. He's back in the Queen's chambers. Dang, dude. This guy this guy's a cug. Chambers being <laughs> slang for vagina. Dude, mm -hmm. he's King Cug. So uh in order to uh subtly get back at Modred, uh Percy has composed a lute song, uh, an ode on his lute. Uh, that reveals the truth about what a scumbag Modred is. Yeah, it's a it's a parody. He's the Weird Al of the Dark Ages. <laughs> and so, in the final panel of this book, it's uh, he's singing his song, and King Arthur's uh, enjoying it, and then Modred is, you know, poo pooing it. Bah! And then the final thing is Lady Rosamund looking at Percy dismissively and just saying "poof." Yeah, she calls mm -hmm. him a poof. Straight because up. he because he plays a musical instrument and and doesn't fight other men to the death for no reason. Unreal. She's so disgusted by him, and that's how they choose to end the book. She sticks her nose up at him yep. with her eyes closed, like like Wesley Snipes oh. in a Blade movie. <laughs> Can we assume? I mean, because slang changes with time. Can we? No, nope, poof still means the same thing. It meant the same thing back then. Yes, yeah, sure did. At least in the fifties when they wrote it. That's horribly offensive. Why couldn't you just yeah. call him a wimp or something? Why'd you have no. to go? Well, I think it's like a, I think maybe they meant it more like a fop. I think poof has homophobic <laughs> It sure overtones. does. It sure does. Jeez. The end. That's how we end this adventure. That Probably end be, this podcast. This, this should be the shit. last episode. I'd, I'd be more than happy to end it on some bitchy yeah. lady calling some guy a poof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely don't have the heart to continue. Uh, but end. we're going to. But we're going to. No. Um, yeah, that's the end. Hey, guys, what do we think of this? Uh, I thought this book was hilarious. <laughs> Shay, Shay, do I need to ask? Nope, you don't. Yeah, this was a... Uh... She's just mad about the horse dying in the beginning because she wanted to braid it. <laughs> this was a perfect rating until that horse died. Uh, <laughs> Which was yeah. right away. <laughs> It, 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 it lost points because the horse died, but got them all back because of the bitchy lady calling someone a poof. <laughs> Uh, well, I I can only do one out of five effete loot fingerings. Ah, oh, such such dainty hands. Mm -hmm. Never seen hard work a day in their lives. Well, I mean, it's all they had to do. There was nothing else to do. You could either be a loot player or you could be a valiant knight. These guys used to be really good at stuff because they didn't waste hours watching TV. In fairness, like, yeah, you would put probably eight hours a day into learning that fucking loot. But then once the sun went down, you went to bed. Because mm -hmm. that's it. Nope, then to... you became the Black Knight. Because you can't see shit. I wonder how many hours of sleep you got during those days. 15 Was... hours. I, th I could see that happening. Like, or... That's what they did. The, once the sun went down, that's their day's over. You well, better I go to bed. I could also see it being the other way. They only got three hours of sleep because they had so much work to do. They didn't. Like uh, uh, mm. Medieval serfs worked uh, like... 
a third of the hours a modern person does. So you're basically uh, defending serfdom. I'm just saying they didn't work a whole lot. Mm. They well, had, they, they had a shit ton of mandatory holidays. Well, assuming that we're going to continue doing this show after this episode, mm -hmm. uh, we should talk about next time. Let's talk yeah. about next time. From the Black Knight to the Dark Knight, right? Woo! Oh, we have Batman? Yeah, we are Batman. Are we really? We are. Huh. It's been 10 episodes since we've seen Batman. I Although feel like we, we did, just did Batman. We, we saw Batman in Justice League yeah. last episode. Maybe it's because like we like burned through a bunch of episodes doing Superman month. Yeah, no, this so, won't, we so won't be seeing quicker. any Superman. We won't be seeing any Superman. Yeah, that did speed us up, actually. It did. Doing four episodes in January, absolutely. It's like uh, COVID times, huh? Remember yeah. that when we had a hustle? Man, we did 100 episodes in like 102 weeks. We missed two weeks. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were all, and it's, at least at that point, we weren't putting them up on YouTube or anything yet until the end, because that would have been too much work. That would have ground me down to fucking nothing. Uh-huh. Uh, so every 10 episodes, we do something about Batman. We take a look, a little look at Batman, see what he's been up to throughout the course of his history. I gave Shay and Mike warning to throw up any goofy ass Batman things you wanted. Cause otherwise it might be a, an actual decent Batman book that I selected on mm -hmm. the wheel. And, uh, I didn't think anybody added anything. Uh, I, uh, was out of town and I it's forgot. Fine. That's totally fine. It just, uh, you know, I don't want to hear any bullshit if it's not some goofy Silver Age nonsense where he turns into a zebra or something. Uh, well, I, uh, that would be my fault then. There are a couple on there that might, that that's might what, fall that's into that. That's definitely what we'll hit. There's, uh, yeah, some early Batman adventures. There's Batman and the Outsiders. That's what You I told to me not at. to add any more goofy Silver Age Batman stuff. You said you didn't want to do them anymore. I gave it. No, 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 no. I, I didn't even add the giant sized Batman where he has the Rip Van Winkle <laughs> beard. If I could have remembered where that was, I was going to throw it on there. Uh, no, no, no. It's not that I don't want to do them. I just don't want them to be the the only representation of Batman because well, they're so similar. Well, then it's good that I didn't add anything to the wheel. But I do want to give them a fair chance because I'm not going to uh, go against the wheel's wishes. If the wheel wants to do that, that's what we're doing. Yep. Probably what we're doing. Uh, yep. Let's let's take a look at the wheel. Uh, we always play some spinning music. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different today. A lot of spinning in that. Mm -hmm. It's certainly a song, and it's certainly about spinning, so there can be no debate. All right. Let's see what we're looking at next time. I do like the song, though. Yeah, it's a good yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got into the yeah, yeah, yeahs recently because of Shay. Yeah, 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 yeahs are great. Yeah, they are. Yeah, okay. Let's see. It's Detective Comics 275. Let's take a look at our list here, which I'm having trouble getting to because there's so much goddamn shit on my screen. Mm -hmm. Detective Comics 275 from 1960. Oh my god! Okay. Holy look at the shit! Description. Look at the description! Yeah. Oh no, I saw, I saw, I saw, Holy I saw. Holy shit! It's Holy zebra. It's, shit! It's Zebra Batman. <laughs> it's literally the Zebra Batman comic he was mocking. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. the thing you were trying to avoid mm -hmm. the it, most. Mm -hmm. The wheel provides. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's because you talk shit about it. the yeah. wheel. The wheel. It hurt. Like, oh yeah. I, I oh, didn't yeah. talk shit on the wheel, but I. I we did. This was not a bit, oh. by the way. This was not faked. Oh, that was <laughs> fucking great. In fairness, there were only like eight or. So in fairness, what probably happened, there's only like nine uh, things on the wheel, and I was looking at them earlier today and went, this fucking Batman Zebra comic, I don't want to read this. And that probably <laughs> stuck in my head. So it's not astronomically impossible that it happened, but it's it's humorously unfortunate. It's great. That's great. So, I'm so happy. I can't wait to do this. Movie. I revived the, interest in the show. The cover, it says, The Zebra Batman. And Batman's yeah. covering zebra print. And Robin's like, get back, everyone. Batman has become a menace. Because he changed his costume. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Thank so, God. Thank God this is what got this came up on Robin, the field. Robin on the cover, this might be a Dick Sprang, I'm not sure. But Robin on the cover looks like he's three years old. Uh, yes, James, he does. It, James, it's a Dick Grayson. It's a Dick Grayson? Nah. Yeah. It's not a Dick Sprang. It's a Dick Grayson. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah, uh, clever sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I can um, run 11 miles, too. I'm sure you can, but usually it requires a little building up to that. What do you think I've been doing? You, but, but I didn't think you were running anywhere close to that much. Before, you had said I'd run like a mile here and there. You don't go from a mile to 11 miles. Uh, give or take. <laughs> give or big, take five or six miles. That's a big give or take. 
I mean, I run at work pretty much all the time. I'm always running. But that's you're you're sprinting. You're, you're yeah. I'm sprinting. You're getting from one spot to another. It's not the same thing. I'm it's, not a slob. I'm not saying you're a slob. Now let's not go retroactively painting me as, as saying no, you're no, a slob. I, I look like that letter Kenny guy with his shirt off. Yeah, and Jared Kisa. Mm. Mm, yeah. mm. We cut me a slice like that of that. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> James and I are sexy. Y'all don't um, know. Maybe we need a 2023 calendar. Dark Side Couch yeah. calendar. Oh man. I, Dark did, just come, calendar, I sure. did just come back from Arizona, and I'm I have a wonderful glow. I've never Ooh. been to Arizona. Oh, it sucks. Yeah. Um, I like it fine. No, I like it fine, too. It's all right. Speaking of sucks, Detective Comics number 275. I bet it's <laughs> going to be fucking great. Yeah, it might be oh, fine. Oh, I am, I am going to be right between you guys and just this hope is... this is going to be okay. Uh, you only, yeah. only want to be right between us because of how sexy we are right now. <laughs> so you want to be a, in that sandwich. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to, what I would hope, and I'm going to almost <laughs> guarantee it's not going to happen. I'll almost guarantee but I'm going to say it right now. I would love to see some villains other than Joker or generic gangsters. And I don't think we're going to get either of those. I think we're going to get another mad scientist with a ray. Mm -hmm. Do we want to make any bets about how he becomes Zebra Batman? Is it a mad scientist with a ray that he stands in front of accidentally? I'm going to say that he has to camouflage himself amongst a herd of zebras. But why does it make him a menace, Mm -hmm. though? Because the zebras are also a menace. Shay, what are you... Pooping (laughs) everywhere. Well, they are a problem. Shay, what are your thoughts? What happens? How does this happen? Magic costume somehow. Oh, he put on the wrong costume somehow. Or like, on... it, or like the science behind that makes the costume do it is oh. what's fucking him up. But like something right. external. He got a costume from Merlin. Yeah. There's a, there's yeah. a Japanese a superhero movie called Zebra Man. Oh, yeah? There is. It's probably huh. the same thing. Mm-hmm. All right, Shay. Uh, we can't I'm leave Shay. until we... Yeah, I'm talking. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm addressing you. It's not just a general term. It's not like it's not like guy. It's not like calling somebody guy. Shay is a very specific mm-hmm. person. Sir guy. Yeah, Sir Shay. Uh, Sir guy the poof. We can't we can't end this show without some plugs. So please do that for us. Okie dokie. Well, listen to any of our other episodes on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pod Republic, Google Podcasts, Pod People USA. The voices in your head, wherever you think you can listen to us, uh, as well as on DarksidesCouch.com. And then also follow us uh, at DarksidesCouch on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, Mm -hmm. where now James has been cutting together some bomb-ass videos, Mm -hmm. which I think is the exact wording I used last week as well. It really is. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it absolutely is. No, yeah, uh, the YouTube's got funny clips and things as well, but uh, just, just listen and subscribe, hit that button, smash it all over town. Mm-hmm. And leave all the episodes playing all the time. Yep. Yeah, just do that for us, guys. Never mm-hmm. stop. Smash that play button like Sir Lancelot is smashing King Arthur's wife. He is. That's what happens. See, now, if that was in the comic, that would get me interested. I swear to God, if the comic in- involved some of that interpersonal drama, I would be way I'm more invested you. in everything. Cucked King Arthur fucks his sister. Cucked King Arthur sounds like a way better comic. I would have loved that comic. I'm just saying. I don't inherently hate the concept of doing the castle-y, medieval-y kind of thing. I would just like to have some sort of personal investment to these shitty characters. I mean, I don't know. Black Knight looked cool. He had a cool design. Uh, anybody got any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, well, just remember that if your wife cheats on you with your best friend does not mean your sister is open for business. Shay! I think all of you can run 11 miles. Sounds up for now, Christian Crusaders. <laughs> we'll talk to you next time on the couch. My sweet love, she waits for me Through storm and shine, cross land or sea Fucking...